What is going on guys, this is your boy Astrum Sensei and welcome to the final part of the basic melee combat tutorial series for Unreal Engine 5. So in this video we are going to be taking a look at how to make the enemy walk to the player and attack the player using the same attack function that we made. Also uh, the enemy is going to be very basic and it's going to be like based on arcade beat em ups so all it does is walk to the player and attack them and uh yeah this is gonna be like the final part of the series so if you want the project files then go check out my patreon i have them up there except for the animation i removed the animations so if you want to preview the project files you have to put in your own animations or at least buy the same pack which is arpg warrior and then in input it into the blueprints but other than that uh the um uh, project files will include everything so yeah special thanks to my patreons and also don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you find this video useful and you want to see more awesome unreal engine content so anyway let us get started by going to the blueprints folder and making an enemy character blueprint so i'm going to use the same the same one that we have been using since we started but i'm gonna make a child blueprint class and that is because i want to be able to uh, change the character's color so just name it pp enemy character so a child actor is gonna inherit everything that the parent has uh, like not everything but all the functions and everything it you're gonna be able to just get all of that so the enemy character we're going to open it and we're going to select the mesh now you have over here materials we have um, mi quinn and mi quinn 2 so i'm just going to open both of them and duplicate them so we have three and um two without a zero why is that anyway just open them um go to tint and make it red and same thing for the other materials so open it tint and make it red or any color that you want for the enemies you know in my book enemies have to be red anyway we're gonna put in queen 3 instead of queen 1 I think no I think it has to be this one yeah there we go and queen 2 yeah there we go now it's looking dangerous and this could work like with um also changing the entire mesh for example you could do the same method by making it a child then going into the blueprint and going to mesh and changing the skeletal mesh but i don't want to do that now because i don't have a mesh ready but it's it's very easy stuff you know you're gonna figure it out on your own that that's part of stuff I just wanted to keep this series very simple but if we do the rpg series on patreon then um yeah it's gonna cover all of that stuff now that we have created the enemy we want to make it uh follow us and attack us so that's like at least uh what's the, the bare minimum we need to do so first of all i'm gonna create a brand new folder i'm gonna call it ai just to avoid losing our AI stuff between that stuff and then I'm gonna right click create a new blueprint and it's gonna be actually no go to artificial Inver intelligence go to behavior tree and I like to call it BT enemy and also for the behavior tree we need to create one more thing which is called a blackboard so call it BB enemy now open the behavior tree and first thing we need to do is set the blackboard to be the one that we've just created so if you open this one you can see blackboard asset they've already set it up uh, automatically i don't know how but they usually do that i'm not going to be like explaining the depth of the behavior trees but i just want to keep it simple and teach you guys how to just make an arcadey enemy so out of the root you want to drag out type sequence And then this sequence, we're going to have two tasks. So actually, no, it might be more than two. We'll see. Um, 
just drag out, go to tasks and just search for move to. Yeah, there we go. And we also want to make another task, which is for attacking. So just type, uh, just press on this new task button and it's going to automatically create one. I call it PT task attack. And there we have it. So first thing of all is that behavior tree tasks, all of them have to start with event receive execute AI. And this one from it, you can get a reference to the parent or whatever pawn or character this uh, blueprint is uh, referring to or whoever the parent is, whoever is possessed. So from the controlled pawn, you want to cast to enemy character you want to start attacking the player character or whoever character you're targeting but the way we have attacking set up right now is not really like a function or custom event so we need to go ahead and fix that over here we have input action attack and it does the all of the attacking stuff and it's not going to work if you if we turn this into a function and that is because we have delays and play montage these don't work with functions so i just want to right click and make it a custom event so add custom event i'm going to call it attack and just connect it like this and actually you can just disconnect this and when you press the attack button just do the custom event yeah that's just better so if you go now back to the task and search for attack you can see that the custom event happens and after that you want to search for finish execute and make it a success so now um it will move to a location and then it will attack but right now we're not telling it where to move to so we need to fix that so first we're going to create another new task and i'm going to call it get target location and this target location task is where we're gonna um, get where the character is or who the character is that we wanna target. So start it again with event receive execute AI. And then you wanna search for, actually no, let's just search for get player character. And this is the character that we want to target. So the way we do this is we promote this character into a variable and it doesn't matter. Like the way we're doing it is very basic. So we only want to, we only have this one player and he's the only player in the game and the enemy will just like know where they are automatically without seeing them. You know, this is how arcadey stuff work and this is how we're doing it today i'm probably going to cover more advanced behavior tree stuff later but for now this is okay um i just don't want to leave you guys hanging without any enemies by the end of this series so anyway uh go to your blackboard and we're going to create an actor so it's going to be an object and this object is going to be called player and the key type you can go here and change it to actor so it's this arrow click it and base class should be actor and then go back to your uh, task which is get target location and we're also going to promote this to a variable and this variable is going to be called player also and we're going to change the variable type to also actor and it's still going to work actually you can see it still works so now um after you did that, we're gonna, um, no, wait. So we're gonna set it to be this also, this value, so this value. So we are going to create a brand new node, which is called set blackboard value as object. And this value is gonna be this one. Actually, we don't need, we don't need this variable. Never mind that. You can just connect it like this and the key you can promote it to a variable and call it player and this is the one that we need actually and you can make it editable 
So now it will set this character to be the player on the blackboard, which is exactly what we need. So next we're just going to finish execute and make it a success. Now all that is perfect, but we still haven't told it when we move to where to move to. So if you select the move to node and go to blackboard key, just select player and now it will automatically move to the player. Also, um, for this one, we didn't add in the tar ta task to add target location. So just search for that and put it before the move to. <clears throat> and I think we should be fine, but we didn't actually activate this behavior tree on the enemy character blueprint. So first thing we need to do to do that is we need to create a brand new blueprint AI. So just create a, another uh, new blueprint and in all classes, so search for AI. And yeah, this is the one that I'm talking about, um, AI controller. So go for detour crowd AI controller, select, and I'm going to call this one BP enemy AI. Now this one is going to be what possesses the player and we're going to run the uh, behavior tree through this. So just type in run behavior tree and the behavior tree asset is going to be this one. So at the begin play, run behavior tree and BT asset is the BT enemy. Now we want to go to the enemy character blueprint, open it. And we have um, in the details panel, search for AI and uh, auto possess AI, AI controller class. This is the one that we need to input. So BP enemy AI compile and press play and you will notice that it's not going to work and that is because we don't have a nav mesh bounds so we're going to add another actor alt classes and search for nav mesh bounds volume and make this larger you can press the b button to preview um, how far like where the enemy can walk and without this one you know if it's not in range then the enemy cannot walk around in it and I know so many steps to having an enemy AI that can walk around and stuff, but yeah, that's just how life works. So there's nothing we can do about it. You can see that it doesn't do anything and it doesn't attack. So we're going to look at the behavior tree while our game is running. So open the behavior tree, go to debug, do this. You can see that it doesn't work. And that is because we have the player here on the, um, blackboard key set as the self actor so we need to go here go and change it to player and i really hope it works now yeah it does you can see the enemy walks towards us and attacks us which is perfect and they don't even like walk to our last location they walk to wherever we are so it's pretty scary honestly to be honest and you can see the camera is being messed up because of the collision but you can see that the enemy can now kill the player and oh my god we can jump but if you want to like disable jump for example you can go to the third person blueprint and disable jump if you are not like if you are dead so we do have this dead um, check so just copy and paste it and if it's false then you can jump So now, if you hit play, you can see that it is perfect. The enemy can attack us and we can attack the enemy. And oh, we can even walk around when we are dead. So let's actually just copy this one. You know, this is not the perfect solution, but for now it's okay. I don't care too much. Um, there in enhanced input action ai move if only if that that is false yeah that's perfect jump also now you can see these are enhanced input action and not really the same as the ones that we made i'm probably gonna make a separate video like or a separate series of videos to cover that anyway let's go to the camera boom and quickly disable the uh, do collision test and now if we go to the game and touch the camera to the character you can see that it doesn't collide with the enemy anymore which is 
exactly what we need because that was really annoying. Oh, okay, the, you can see the enemy can still attack us while they are dead. We can just go to the third person character event grab and on the attack uh, custom event, just cut paste the dead branch, check if it's false. And if it is false, then they can attack. And I'm pretty sure that won't happen again. So yeah, that should fix it. I want to try interrupting me getting attacked. So I just want to have that interrupted to see what, like you can see something breaks. I think it might just be this value being way too long. Where is it? So I'm going to make it like one second to see how that is. Yeah, I think it was just this delay value. You want to mess with it. You know, when you're interrupted, you, this is how long it takes before you can attack again. So this is just that. So I think you can already make a small fighting game with this, like a beat em up. So you can just copy as many enemies as you want and adjust the health values and stuff. You can even add some um, like stats and stuff, all of that. You know, it's not basic anymore if I teach that, so that will break the premise of the series. But you can see we have multiple enemies coexisting and they like, oh, they can hurt each other. That's that's not a good idea. So we're going to be able to determine whether this one and this one are the same type of character. So right click on the blueprints folder, go to blueprints, make an enumeration. And I call this one enum character type. And we have two character types, which are player and enemy. Now go to the third person character, create a new variable, call it character type. And this one, just type enum character type and get that same blueprint or enum that we made and make this one editable. So now um, go to the enemy character and then search for character type and change it to enemy and compile. Now go back to the third person character. And when we hit detect, we want to not detect someone who's the same character type as us. So get character type and get this one also from the character that's actually attacking and then search for not equal enum. So if the character type is not equal to the same character type of the character that's attacking, then that's not going to happen. So or if, if, if it is not equal, then it's going to happen. So you can hit react if it's not the same character type. I don't even need to test this. I'm pretty sure it works. So if we go here, let them attack. You can see they won't hit react out of anyone else's um, attacks, but we've already died. So that's awful. Anyway, guys, um, I really hope you enjoyed this video and this entire series and that it was useful. I really hope also that it was like a nice introduction to how to make combat in blueprints. I know that it's very, very basic, but I'm OK with that. You know, this that was the goal of this series to just make a basic combat system for those who are like starting or want to start making combat based games. You know, it's not supposed to be this huge thing. It's just supposed to introduce you to how you want to start coding your own battle system, but not really definitively how to do it. So you're gonna like, it's just a starter thing. Anyway, I really enjoyed doing it and I hope that it was useful. If you guys enjoyed the series, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Also, the full project files are going to be on Patreon, except for the animations. So please check those out. And I'll see you guys in the next video or in the next series. So take care, have a great day and bye.